On August 10th, 2020, one of the largest thunderstorm events in recent history sliced a 700 mile long path across the Midwest. The storm packed winds up to 140 miles per hour and set the record for the costliest thunderstorm event in the United States. In this video, we're going to walk through the whole event and talk to people who went through the storm. This is the story of the August 10th, 2020 derecho. On August 9, 2020, the Storm Prediction Center issued a marginal risk for portions of Iowa and Illinois. The next morning, the risk was upgraded to an enhanced risk, and then a few hours later, the risk was upgraded to a moderate risk. The second highest categorical outlook the Storm Prediction Center can issue. A large MCS positioned in South Dakota and Nebraska was quickly moving southeast, and the observed sounding from Davenport, the mesoscale analysis, and the HRRR showed a loaded gun scenario with Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, Davenport, Rockford, and Chicago in the path of an extremely rare and dangerous type of thunderstorm known as a derecho. A storm is classified as a derecho when it travels 250 miles or more. The storm must produce winds of 58 miles per hour or greater throughout most of its life, and also have instances of 75 mile per hour winds or greater. As the storm entered Iowa, severe thunderstorm warnings started to be issued as significant wind reports started to come in. Eventually, the storm was knocking on Des Moines' front door, and with radar detecting winds up to 100 miles per hour, storm chaser Evan Williams was sitting in the storm's path, preparing to document the event. So, hello, my name is Evan Williams, and I live in Iowa. I'm 15 years old, and yeah, I'm here to tell you about my experience with the 2020 duration. I know you're a weather guy, so you look at the Storm Prediction Center outlooks. What was it like, like as the derecho was like the day before the derecho happened, watching the risk go from marginal to enhanced to moderate? What was going through your head? So it kind of all started um, the night before with the zero zero Z H R R run, H triple R run, and it showed a giant MCS coming through Iowa, and I was like. Mm, I don't don't think I'm not too sure about that. Then run after run, it kept showing, and everyone was making fun of it. But it kept showing up, and we were in a marginal. I think even the risk was down in Missouri, so I wasn't even expecting anything. But then I woke up, and we have been upgraded to slight risk, and then enhanced for Illinois because I guess they were picking up the models were to get it even stronger. So it was definitely a game like changer to wake up from nothing go to a slight but it made sense when the storm first got going like as when it first started moving in from nebraska into iowa and the wind reports started coming in what was what were you thinking as those reports started to pour in and you start to realize like oh this is really happening mm -hmm. so that day i had band camp so i was not at home which you know whatever but i was tracking the radar of course and i saw the mcs it was in northern Nebraska at the time and I was watching it slowly getting stronger as it was like 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. at the time and they issued a severe thunderstorm watch in MCD2 saying that the risk could be downstream and to expect another watch and the first moment that I realized that this was something is when the National Weather Service out of Omaha tweeted that they got 75 mile an hour wind gust and they didn't even get the storm they just got the tail end the gust front and that already produced wind damage and I was like okay like this is something that could be damaging coming in here soon then the next time that I got a little nervous is when everyone was talking about the radar returns with the velocity of 140 miles an hour which I know is you know it's high up in the ground but all it takes is one gust to get it down to the ground and I was like okay and this is it's an hour away now and it's only getting stronger so I was definitely getting nervous mm -hmm. When the storm was starting to approach, like you could see it on the horizon when it started to get like dark and you could see the shelf cloud, what were you thinking then? So then I was like, okay, it's time. Like I was calling my mom. It's like, it's time to come pick me up now, please. Um, because I just want to be home. Like, I know this is bad. She's in a work call and yeah, it was just so she finally came and got me. The tornado siren started going off because it was a 70 mile hour wind warning. So that triggers it and then it was time to go. And I was heading home and we headed west and that's where the storm was approaching from. So we got there and all it was, it was a wall of darkness. And with every storm, you know, it's dark, but this storm was just, 
it was darker than before and it was here we didn't have any time so we literally got maybe half a mile and it was there so yeah it's definitely dark when the storm like came over you what were you thinking like as the wind and the rain really started to hit so we could see we're like in a commercial area and there's like some sand and stuff and it was right across the street and we're about the light was about to turn green and a wall of sand flew up and i was like wow like and this is feet in front of me i was like getting nervous we're about to head right into it and then we got into it and it's just insane the winds are going crazy not the whole tree branches but you know like the little like parts of the trees those were flying off going crazy in the road and some big tree limbs were flying off as well and the rain the like it was going sideways like i've never seen before that was pretty insane and then we literally just made it not even one mile there are already giant trees down I think that one of the most underrated parts of a storm is like all the sounds that go on because like you're so mm-hmm. fixated on this moment that you, a lot of times you're not tuned in to like the sounds that are happening around you. How would you describe the sound? So it was definitely, it's it very loud because the wind and then you have the rain and then the tornado sirens. And I remember, so I was in the garage and the garage door is still open. I set the back door and I was looking out to the street all with all the wind and all the rain and the lightning and the tornado sirens and then... I looked out and I couldn't even see my neighbor's house anymore. It was just very overwhelming. And that moment was the first time like I've ever been scared by mother nature. Like I've never been scared, just a thunderstorm, whatever, stay inside. But this, I did not feel safe anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I, I needed to take cover. So it was, it was a scary situation. When the storm finally passed through, was it like a sigh of relief? You're like, oh, thank God that's finally over. Or was it more like, I kind of want to do that again? <laughs> Well, a little bit of both. So I was definitely happy that I was over and thankful. It, the damage wasn't too bad here, just trees down. But it was definitely a, a good experience. Like, it was interesting. I've never experienced something like that. So, I mean, yeah, so a little bit of the same. Just a few miles to the north in Ames, Iowa, Mikey Grosspeach was sitting in his dorm while his college braced for impact. Uh, I'm Mikey Grosspeach. I'm a freshman at Iowa State University, and uh, yeah, that's that's me. So I understand you were at Iowa State during the derecho. Explain, like in the in the morning before the storm hit, like when all the warnings were starting to come in from far western Iowa. What was that experience like? Did you know what was coming at all? Well, I kind of knew a storm was coming because I checked my weather app because we were gonna just play something out in the courtyard. So I just knew it was gonna rain. But I didn't think much of it initially. As the storm started getting closer and more and more significant wind reports started to come in, what were you kind of what was kind of going through your mind? Well, before the wind hit, the sky just turned like this like deep yellow. And we're told when like when I was in third grade, it's like if the sky's yellow, you're gonna have a tornado. There was a little bit of a, a tornado thought going through my head. And then the wind started to pick up and the rain, and it just started blowing everything everywhere. So it became a little a little frightening for for a second. Uh, when the storm, like, when it, like, the worst of the storm hit, what was kind of going through your mind? Um, well, when the worst of the storm was happening, I was actually kind of laughing because there were plastic, um, like, chairs to sit out in the courtyard, and I was just watching from my dorm window them just being battered against, like, the wall of the thing and breaking. It was just kind of funny, but also it was a little scary. I thought a window was going to break. What? How would you describe the winds? I know a lot of people described it kind of like a hurricane on land. Would you say it was kind of similar to that? Yeah, yeah, and especially being where I was, it kind of made like a little bit of a wind tunnel too, which just amplified it. After terrorizing Des Moines, the storm continued its march east, and it was still intensifying. The next town in the storm's way? Cedar Rapids, where it would cause its worst damage. In some spots, winds were estimated to have reached up to 140 miles per hour. That's the same wind speed as an EF3 tornado. These winds flattened cornfields, Silos were blown apart, trees snapped like toothpicks, and siding was blown off of homes. As the storm entered Illinois, the Storm Protection Center issued a rare, particularly dangerous situation severe thunderstorm watch. And in that watch, they highlighted the likelihood of wind gusts up to 100 miles per hour. While approaching Chicago, the storm moved through a sheer bullseye. A few kinks in the line developed, which enabled the storm to put down a barrage of tornadoes. Thankfully, most of these were in the EF0 to EF1 range. In the storm's path, my friend Sky watched as the large storm pushed through town. 
So she was in Illinois when the derecho came through, and I'm sure you have some a story you want to tell about that day. When the storm reached the Chicago area, it was still a pretty strong storm. It, like, it was starting to put down tornadoes because it was going through a sheer bullseye. What was it like as the storm like got closer and closer to Chicago and the warnings started to come out? Um, like at first it was just like raining normally, I'm pretty sure. And then like on my TV there was just like this like huge siren and we looked at the window and trees like fell over and it was like the hardest rain I've ever seen. So I know there were quite a few tornadoes around the Chicago area because that's where there was a sheer bullseye. So the storm was able to get a bit more organized with it ro- with its rotation and put down a few small tornadoes. What was it like to have so many tornado warnings all in such a small populated area? Um, I mean, like, there's never really been like a tornado in Chicago that I know of, like close by. So it was like pretty scary. And all my friends who, like, lived in those suburbs, they were, like, telling me there's so many, like, tornadoes by us and stuff like that. It was just scary. When the storm, like, first hit, when, like, all the wind started to pick up and, like, the rain started to intensify, what was that experience like? Um, I mean, like, I didn't get caught outside or anything, but when we looked out, because I have, like, a huge window in my house, when we looked out, there were, like, people running and, like, falling, and, like, there was just a lot of commotion. Mm -hmm. And... Like, almost all the trees on my street fell over. Like, trees were going into cars and stuff like that, too. I remember a few years ago, there was a storm. There was such strong wind that, like, every few minutes, you just hear loud cracks from all the trees falling down. Was it like that? Uh, yeah. It was just, like, such harsh wind that I couldn't really hear anything. Mm -hmm. Like, that's all I heard. After terrorizing Chicago, the storm continued its trek east. As the storm entered Indiana, it appeared to be on a weakening trend. As the sun set and took away its precious storm-fueling power. This storm's damage path was 770 miles long, approximately 500 wind reports were called in, and 25 tornadoes touched down. This storm caused an estimated $7.5 billion in damage, making it the costliest thunderstorm disaster in American history. And unfortunately, four people lost their lives. Many areas are still recovering from this historic storm, so in the video description I link the Together We Achieve website. Over there, you can send in donations to help those who are still recovering. Before this video ends, I want to give a really big thank you to everyone who contributed to this project. Without you, this would not have been possible. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is my first time doing like a interview style video like this. Uh, if you liked it, hit the like button and maybe I'll do another one in the future. Who knows?